Welcome, fellow nomads, to the Nomad Nation Network. I am your host and fellow nomad, Step Van Rav. This is Nomad News for Friday, August 16th, 2019. Before we get to our first story, guys, do me a favor and look right down there and click that little red subscriber button and be sure to click the bell right next to it and it'll give you a new notification every single time there is a new episode uploaded of Nomad News. That way you will stay in the know when it comes to everything in the Nomad Nation. All right, guys, to our first story, I uh, promised when I started this uh, new Nomad News that I would try to stay out of the drama, but unfortunately, uh, in the van life community, there's just going to be drama. So uh, I don't feel like I'd be doing my job if I didn't go ahead and touch on the stories that are sweeping the van life internet community by storm. And uh, with that being said, on to our first story, which is none other than in the red corner, you have Camper Van Kevin. And then in the blue corner, you have Van Life Sheldon's Travels. Now, Camper Van Kevin, I have never met Camper Van Kevin. I actually saw him this year at RTR from a distance walking his dogs, but he looked like he was pretty preoccupied in uh, walking his dog, so I didn't approach him. On the other hand, Van Life Sheldon's, I actually know Mike and Stephanie, and I met them at RTR this year, and we actually hung out with our mutual friend, Paul Barker, bread trucker, uh, and Chelsea Ficari, and uh, some of us other one, uh, other uh, nomads that were there this year at RTR. So I've held, I have actually hung out with Stephanie and Mike on a few different occasions. I was actually working uh, on a TV show. For those of you that don't know, I work here in Los Angeles in the TV, film, and entertainment industry. I was working till six o'clock this morning on a TV show on HBO called Westworld. So yeah, that is my domain and where I work. And um, about two and a half, three months ago, I was working on a TV show for Fox called 911. And at that time, we were out on the Venice Boardwalk in Venice Beach, and we were filming an episode or a, a scene out there with some fire trucks, and uh, we had a stuntman up in the top of a palm tree. And lo and behold, no, uh, I'm sitting there with my mind preoccupied with work and I look up and lo and behold, there is Mike and Stephanie. They are just, they just happened to be out on the Venice boardwalk that day cause they were in Southern California and they were doing their YouTube video. So I ended up making a cameo or special guest appearance in that video. I will try to find that scene possibly. And if I do, I'll roll that right now. Well, it looks like the fire department's here doing something. Hope there's not a big emergency here on Venice beach. Or is this just a movie set? Huh? Well, that's what it looks like it is, guys. Just a movie set. We were wondering if we would see any type of cool movie sets while we were here, but looks like we do. And it looks like we know this guy right here. <laughs> How's it going, my friend? <laughs> Well, guys, we'll get back at you in a minute. Well, guys, we actually ran up on one of our friends, Vagabond Days here, so, uh, and he's actually here Bully, putting Bully, on Bully. a 911 here, and they're trying to get the final shot for the day, so. My dog is trying to get their last shot of the day guys so they can uh, 
they're running out of daylight here, so they're gonna try to get this last shot so we can all get back home. And they can finish their day. We're looking at in the trees. Well, guys, what you got to just see is a little preview of a show on Fox coming out called 911. They're doing a taping here. So, we actually know one of the guys. He's a YouTuber. I'm going to put his channel link below, and I'm sure we're going to hang out with him before we leave LA. So, it was super exciting, especially for me. It like felt like we were actually on set because we were. Those were they were actually shooting a scene, and he was telling us that they were trying to get it done before the sun went down and they didn't get uh, they Permit had to get permits, tomorrow, yeah. Right. So they had to get it before the sun went down, and in two shots they got it. So it was funny that we were able to watch like down to the line kind of shooting. So it was really fun, and I really felt a part of it because our friend, like he said, was calling cut, and he was like, you know, we're done for the day, and that was really exciting to see. So we're just gonna keep hanging out here on Venice Beach, guys, and I'm sure we'll meet up with him later, no problem. We'll introduce him later on, and I'm sure you know his channel anyway. Yeah. But let's hang out and enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'll card their video so you can go uh, check it out. I have also, like I said, uh, they've appeared in two or three of my videos uh, when I was at RTR this year. Uh, so I'll try to put some of that footage in there as well so you guys can... Uh... Look who it is. It's the Van Life Sheldons over here. Hey. Hey, howdy. What's up? <laughs> What's up, man? Vagabond days. What up? <laughs> Mr. Brett <laughs> Trucker. <laughs> See that I do personally know them. I do consider them friends of mine. Uh, I don't have a lot of personal nomad friends that I've actually met and hung out with. I have like a handful or I, I have like I can count on one hand my best uh, van, real van life nomad friends. But they are one of those that are on my hand. And uh, they've never been anything but uh, just genuine, sweet and nice to me. So I don't know... Uh, where all this negativity about them is coming from. Um, now I know that, uh, I was told at RTR this year to be careful, possibly approaching camper van Kevin, because he's not the most approachable in a large setting like that. That was all hearsay though, because I didn't approach him. Uh, so I don't know if that's true. Uh, I've watched camper van Kevin for probably five or six years on YouTube. A long time ago, um, you know, I started watching his videos and I kind of fell out uh, watching his videos as other nomads started uh, started their YouTube channels and my interest changed to other nomads that were a little bit closer to myself and what I was doing, which I think a lot of us do. Uh, but uh, I still have nothing bad to say about Camper Van Kevin because I do not know the guy. Uh, but I do know that this drama that is going on right now between Camper Van Kevin and Van Life Sheldon's travels is reminiscent of the stuff that I went through or, you know, that I saw when I was in high school with the jocks and the popular kids sitting at one table. And then you had the nerds and the geeks at another table. And then you had the stoners and the rock and rollers at another table. And, you know, if one of them intermingled and over to another table, then somebody might get jealous or get mad and... You know, this is uh, this is what we deal with in the van life community, unfortunately. It's not just a van life community. It's the YouTube community. Anytime you have people that are vying for the public eye, uh, I think people can get their feelings hurt or, you know, think that somebody's uh, trying to maliciously do something to them. And, it, you know, in the van life community, it really turns into drama. I've seen it time and time again. Uh, I will say with this Patreon person that is uh, evidently was helping sponsor the Van Life Sheldon Travels uh, new rebuild for their van. I don't know where this lady's coming from. Uh, I'm not going to mention her name. Uh, there's a couple other channels. Or if you saw Stephanie's apology in Van Life Sheldon's Travels, she actually mentions her name. I'm not going to mention her name. 
But I will say, uh, if you look, I don't really, I have a Patreon page. I don't have one Patreon. I've had the thing for probably two years, but I've never once uh, promoted the thing because I feel like uh, if you do that, you're kind of selling your soul to uh, whoever your Patreons are. Uh, they're going to, you know, if they're donating money to you every month, they're going to think that they are, uh, that that, that donation of money or funds or anytime somebody, you know, there's an old adage in life, nothing in life that's for free. And that is true. It doesn't matter if you're van lifer and trying to live free. Nothing in life is for free. And when you have Patreons that are sponsoring you, they're going to feel like they have some kind of control over you I do believe and they uh, have a they should be able to you know put in their two cents and their two cents should mean more because they're actually paying their two cents you know what I mean so when they give you a suggestion on something they want you to do or you know they really expect you to do that and I just want to be independent and I want to be free and I want to do what I want to do I don't want to be fighting with people or hurting anyone's feelings because uh, they're my Patreon and maybe they're giving me a hundred dollars a month uh, in sponsorship money for my YouTube channel and uh, they want me to talk like this or say this or have this mic or you know set up the angle of the camera this way you know I, I want to do this you know whether it fails or whether it doesn't whether it fails or whether it flourishes I want it to be my brainchild and uh, I'm not uh, going to sell my soul to anybody. Now, granted, for us nomads that are having to work for a living and uh, we hear about uh, our other nomad uh, people in the community that are bringing in, you know, fifteen to $2,000 a month uh, from their Patreon page, then, you know, that sounds very appealing. Um, because if I can be honest with you, if I've made that kind of money uh, just on my Patreon, I would be able to really cut back on a J-O-B. And I think that's what most of uh, the van lifers want to do. I have a job. I'm in my office right now. Um, to give you a an example of my job. So yesterday, I worked here. Yesterday, today's Friday. So yesterday, I worked Thursday. I came into my office here, and I worked from 6:30 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then at 3 p.m., I knew I had a I had a 6:30 p.m. call time on Westworld. So I left my office here at 3 p.m. and went and slept for a couple hours. And then I was on the lot in downtown L.A. to work on West for Westworld at 6.30 p.m. And then I worked on Westworld till uh, 6 a.m. And then I got to bed about 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. this morning. And I literally slept till about 5 p.m. And I woke up and I came back into the office and here I am trying to get an episode of Nomad News going. Uh, I've been having a lot of technical difficulties, which hasn't made that the easiest with my uh, with my sound, but hopefully we're getting that those things worked out. But back to van life, Sheldon's Travels, and uh, Camper Van Kevin. Yeah, so I know they're all meeting up there at Scott and Terry's uh, at Destination Open Road, and uh, I guess uh, there was Rambling, Rambling Rome, Rambling without a G. I guess she was meeting up there as well, and... From, uh, you know, what this Patreon person said uh, that is evidently a Patreon of Camper Van Kevin. Uh, she's a Patreon of Ramblin' Rome. And she's a Patreon of uh, Mike and Stephanie with Van Life Sheldon's Travels. So if you look at the common denominator between this drama, there's drama between Camper Van Kevin and Van Life Sheldon's Travels. There's drama between Ramblin' Rome and Camper Van, I mean, and Van Life Sheldon's Travels. And the common denominator in this drama is this Patreon person. So that is another good reason to not have a Patreon person sponsoring you because uh, they are feel like, I think they feel like that they're paying money to get a avenue to have a personal relationship and a personal stake in your channel or what you're doing. And uh, this Patreon person actually went on... Um, a guy in his van, Meek, I believe his name is. I met him at RTR this year as well. I didn't really hang out with him too much. But uh, uh, yeah, I met Meek at uh, RTR this year. And uh, he had he did an episode where he had this Patreon lady come on and basically uh, spill the tea on Van Life Sheldon's travel, supposedly. 
And I listened to that. I watched the video. I'll link it as well down in the description uh, so you can check it out if you'd like to. But uh, what I gathered from that is uh, she was sounded pretty bitter. Um, you know, uh, if what she is saying is 100 percent true, there's a little bit of, you know, you got to you got to give it a, a give her a little bit of, um, you know, I can understand where she's coming from. By no means, if you're going to give somebody money uh, to do something, then you should not, you know, just give the money. Don't uh, expect to be, you know, she said she was doing it for tax credit purposes as well. So it's not like she wasn't getting anything out of this deal. If you're going to give the money, just give the money. Don't worry about what the people are doing with the money. One of her major complaints were that Mike and Stephanie were doing live streams and not telling the truth and uh, telling that they were using their own personal money and stuff like that. And she was getting butthurt about it because they weren't giving her credit, but she wants to remain anonymous. So uh, it sounds to me like the common, denom common denominator of this drama is that Patreon person. And like I said, I know Mike and Stephanie personally, and they've never done or said anything negative about me. They've just always been sweethearts. So listening to this Patreon person, she sounds like the type of person that is just ate up with drama. Now, evidently, uh, if you watch Stephanie's um, from Van Life Sheldon and Mike, if you watch their video about um, what was going on, uh, their explanation video. If you watch that video, then you know that Stephanie actually says the lady's name and gives her YouTube channel. Now, I didn't go and check any of that out. I didn't look that in depth into it, but uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I still feel like Stephanie and Mike are good friends of mine. I think this whole thing will blow over as far as the way they did their um, explanation video. Uh, I don't know about just having Stephanie do it. I kind of thought Mike should have been in there as well, but I'm sure they had reasons for that. I think Mike is taking a lot of heat right now with these allegations this Patreon person has made about Mike being abusive to Stephanie. Look, I saw them on, for a week at RTR. I never seen anything anything that would give you, you know, you never know what's going on behind closed, door, closed doors, but I never saw anything like that out of Mike. And uh, Stephanie seemed to be just as happy as she could be being with Mike. And those two live in a very small, what is it, a ProMaster van, you know, so you got to be pretty close uh, to to be able to spend that much time together in that small a space. And they do it very well. Uh, I would also like to say that they they hustle hard on this YouTube thing, man. They go out and they go out of their way and they travel anywhere and everywhere where they can meet other nomads to help them grow their YouTube subscriber base. And, you know, because uh, they're living off this YouTube thing. So I totally understand that. I'm not hating on them at all. You know, Camper Van Kevin's been doing this a long time. He's got a huge following. So, uh, but he did the same thing, you know, and uh, the problem is, is these bigger YouTubers, they really, you know, it, it, doesn't matter how humble they act like they are. A lot of times what you find out when you meet them in person, they're not near as humble as they portray themselves uh, on YouTube. I did want to say that I did reach out to uh, Mike and Stephanie because I do have Mike's number. You know, I have their number. They are personal friends of mine. Uh, so I did reach out and uh, I did get a I did get a text back from Mike. Uh, you know, I've been talking about this. I texted him originally on uh, a while back about this going on and uh, didn't really get any response for a couple of, for a few days. And, uh, you know, and I tried to make a video about this a couple of times and then ended up just scrapping it because I didn't know enough about it or I just didn't feel like I was, you know, I wanted to be, uh, have a little bit more, see where this went. So, um, uh, so anyway, I got a text back from Mike and he said, uh, sorry, I was trying to be PC about this stuff, but we have to make our own video. And that's all I got. I said, okay, no worries. Uh, I made a video today for Nomad News, but decided to scrap it until I need more details. Would still love to get you on the show if you are interested. If not, no worries. And uh, my invitation, Mike, still is uh, there to you and Stephanie. <clears throat> if you would like to come on the show and uh, give your side of the story, I would love to have you guys on. And uh, give your side of the story because there's always two sides to every story. That, uh, you know, goes to Camper Van Kevin as well, if you'd like to come on the show and uh, give your side of the story. But at this point, I think it should just, uh, we should let it blow over and, you know, 
it won't be another, it won't be a week until there'll be some other drama that somebody's, you know, all upset about. So anyway, on to our next story, which is going to be, uh, I just basically talk about what people are asking me about and everybody's been asking me about the van life, Sheldon's travels and the camper van Kevin thing. And the other thing people have been asking me about is Dave 2D in the comments. They've been letting me know that Dave 2D, Dave 2D uh, vlogs has uh, privatized his video category once again. He did this back uh, about a month ago. Then he started slowly releasing some of his old videos for people to see. And then now he's reprivatized them again, which makes it look like he's deleted them. But he actually hasn't deleted them. He's just set them to private where you can't see them where there is no video catalog when you go to his channel this is no content now there is like two or three live streams that he's had with his new puppy i think her name is love or something like that what is her name i can't remember leave me a comment let me know what dave's dog his new puppy's name is i think it's love that's a good that's a really good name for a i think she's an australian shepherd or a blue healer for a cow dog she's actually a cow dog i grew up with those dogs actually my dad has those dogs uh, when we were on the ranch uh, let's see, what is she? She is a blue healer. Yeah. And, uh, she's a cow dog. They're cow dogs. Very, very smart dogs. Uh, and Dave's dog is adorable. But, uh, as far as him deleting his videos or setting his pri his videos back to private, uh, I just feel like, uh, you know, Dave's probably going through some transition stuff. I think, uh, he's got, you know, he's got this huge Patreon thing going too. I know Dave's uh, experienced some heat and some hate in the YouTube community uh, from people making uh, some negative comments about him as far as being alt-right and Mr. Insensitive. And, you know, uh, I've seen some videos popping up in that kind of regards. And, you know, that's one of those things you're going to deal with when you put yourself out there on the YouTube space is uh, people that just don't agree with you at all. And are going to bash you. And I think Dave's going through that now. And uh, from what I heard through the grapevine is he may be looking at basically uh, trying to support himself with his art. You know, evidently he's a pretty good artist. And I think he's stepped back and probably concentrating on the art. Because even though he's grown his YouTube subscriber base to like 30 or 40,000 uh, there's not really much gratitude in this YouTube thing. Mostly what you're going to get is a lot of people that's going to hit you with a lot of negativity. Uh, and the hardest part about it for us people that are doing this YouTube thing is, uh, you know, you can have a hundred beautiful, supportive, encouraging comments. And it's that one negative troll that just like stabs you right here. And then it makes you regret even doing the video and you're thinking, man, I shouldn't even be messing with this stuff. It's just not worth it. And, uh, you know, these, these YouTube videos are free. You know what I mean? It's not like you're paying, I guess if you're a Patreon, you are paying. So I think maybe that's why Dave, you know, uh, may be reevaluating what he's doing. And I completely understand that. All right, guys, now let's touch base on a story that we talked about uh, previously on an episode of Nomad News. And that is the uh, cease and desist letter that the Nomad Movement, the YouTube channel, the Nomad Movement uh, received from the apparel company Nomadic Movement. Um, in their latest, in one of their latest videos, they actually... Uh, Touched base on this and said, I uh, gave a follow up of what was going on. And basically, uh, one of the positive, though, let's talk about some positive things about being a YouTuber now. So, uh, one of their fans or one of their subscribers that actually watches their channel actually reached out to them, and he is actually an attorney named Peter. And he's actually built, building out a van himself. Uh, airplane going over guys we're pretty close to lax uh, airport so it makes it kind of difficult to do these nomad news videos because the airplanes are landing all the time but anyway um yeah so peter reached out to them and he is a propriety lawyer i guess that could be the wrong word uh, but he uh, i guess specializes in intellectual property and he is a subscriber of theirs and a fan of theirs and is actually building out a van himself for him and his son because i guess he's a competitive surfer snowboarder or something like that you'll have to go to the nomadic movements uh, channel and watch that video i will link it down below or card it up here or wherever the card comes out so you can go watch their video in regards to this evidently peter reached out and uh it's looking pretty positive that they're going to actually get to keep their name 
anytime you're ha- you have something like this go on, uh, seeking legal counsel is always advised. And uh, the great thing about the YouTube community is uh, they had somebody come out right away in support of them and wanting to help them. So uh, they linked Peter's channel in their description and gave him a shout out. Well, I'm going to link Peter's website uh, in the description as well because some of us other nomads may run into this type of thing and uh, need some legal counsel or advice. And I can tell you right now that if it was me, I would uh, use probably get a hold of Peter and try to use his services as well. So uh, in the nomad community, uh, maybe we should all send him our business if we need it. Hopefully we won't need it, but if we do need it, it would be really nice to have a representative for us on the YouTube platform that's in the nomad community. And possibly Peter may be that representative, maybe that guy. Uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly how this transpires, what transpires, and how this uh, ends up. But as of right now, it's looking pretty positive. My last order of business here on Nomad, this episode of Nomad News, is this trend I am really seeing now all of a sudden since we have have our new uh, van life queen bee, Janelle Eliana, uh, since she's uh, burned up the YouTube atmosphere uh, with her first three videos, we're now seeing a trend of a lot of pretty uh, new van life girls. This is a new van life girl that uh, looked like she started her channel doing uh, with a, an idea of doing fitness stuff. But now it has changed directions and her last videos has been about van life. She has like a 3500 Sprinter, I guess, that she's built out. I'm not sure if it's actually her van. I'm starting to think that some of these pretty girls may be borrowing vans from, uh, they're, they're bar- borrowing their brother's raper van or something. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can tell it's her van, but um, she is living in a van. Her name is Shay Click. I like to give out small YouTubers. I like to give them a plug. I was one of her f- first thousand subscribers. She's already reached a thousand subscribers. I think her first or second van life video has done 16,000 views. So just like any pretty girl on YouTube, she's come out of the gate on fire. Not a, not Janelle Eliana fire, but she's doing very well. And I'm sure uh, she's a pretty girl. She's going to do very, very well on the platform if she stays at it and keeps it going. So uh, her name is Shay Click. I will link her channel down below if you'd like to go check it out. Do me a favor, guys. Anytime I mention somebody in one of the episodes of Nomad News, if you would, uh, if you go over there and you enjoy their content and you end up subscribing to their channel, do me a favor and throw me a plug. Let me know, like, hey, I saw you on Nomad News, and I came over here from Nomad News because I want this to be a positive experience for the van life community. What I'm doing here, and. I want these people to know that I'm talking uh, genuinely and I'm talking good about them and and I'm not trashing them uh, by any means and uh, just trying to uh, help us all flourish. There's enough uh, there's enough good in this whole thing to go around for all of us, even though uh, we get hit with some negativity with the drama from from time to time. It's still mostly a positive thing. And that's why I do it, because I enjoy it. So, oh. Another airplane. I don't know if you guys can hear these planes or not, but they go over like literally every five minutes. There's another plane going over to land at LAX. And to make matters worse, I have a train track right outside my window, my office window that uh, is so close when the train goes by, it literally shakes my office. So maybe one day I'll leave the camera rolling. I always have to cut. Maybe I'll leave everything rolling and let you guys try to hear the train noise when the train goes by. But uh, when it comes to doing this YouTube thing, I really could not have got, I love having a space, but it couldn't be any, any more challenging doing YouTube videos in this space because uh, my office, we there it's a garment manufacturing facility. So <laughs> there's a heavy machinery and all kinds of sewing machines and everything you can imagine going that makes noise. There's a dye house right next door to us that dye clothing and they have these big dye machines and stuff. And uh, so it's literally, let's see, it is 10 22 PM. And I can sit here when it's pretty quiet other than the planes going over and try to get a YouTube video done for you guys. But anyway, guys, um, 
Uh, my very last order of business is my own plug. I don't know if you guys saw my last YouTube upload, but that was actually my new van life podcast that is called Gone Nomad. I have that set on my Podbean network where my podcasts are being hosted. It's set so anytime I upload a podcast, it automatically uploads it to YouTube. Let me know what you guys think of that. I don't know if you guys are going to want my podcast mixed in with the Nomad News videos. It makes it easier for me because uh, that way my podcast, people know that I did the podcast because I don't think too many of you are on Podbean, but I imagine a bunch of you are on YouTube. That's why you're watching this video, right? So um, they're just they're just going to be speaking podcasts, no video with it. I may have some guests on in the future, and if I do have guests on in the future, I possibly will uh, do uh, video for those when I have guests uh, doing the podcast. But if it's just me talking about van life, there won't be any video. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them where they automatically upload to YouTube or not. I'm trying to make my mind up on that. Uh, if you have some suggestions, um, all ears, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment suggestions, um, uh, in the comment suggestions, in the comment category down below. Uh, I'm also going to be putting a, uh, direct email together, probably nomadnews at gmail.com. If I get that, it's going to be uh, down in the comments uh, below. And you can, if you need to send me an email, if you have a tip or if you have something I haven't talked about, if you know a great van life YouTuber that is very small, just starting out and maybe they're not getting a lot of traction, uh, I'd love to give them a shout out, you know, and try to get them, help them get them jump started. Even though my channel is really small, I'd like to, uh, you know, give them a shout out and let them know, uh, let everybody know that that's uh, they're another nomad in the community. Uh, I feel like there's other news channels in this nomad uh, space, but uh, it seems like those uh, channels just mostly concentrate on the larger the larger van life YouTubers that really don't need uh, any. They don't need any plugs or they don't need anybody because they're bigger than all the news channel, all of us news channels put together. So they really don't need anybody helping them as far as helping them grow. So I'm hoping I can uh, if I can grow this thing to a large to a large platform. Uh, my goal is always going to be to shout out small YouTubers like Shay Click here that just got started or maybe even somebody that's been doing it for a long time that doesn't have a lot of traction yet. You know, uh, it's all about, uh, you know, helping the community and help people, helping people grow for me. Anyway, guys, here comes another plane. So that's going to do it for this episode of Nomad News. Um, I thank you guys for watching. I read all your comments, so please comment down below. Let me know what you think of this new Nomad News genre I got going on. And don't forget, guys, if you can't be good, at least be good at it. Peace.